Greetings, friend, and welcome aboard. Today, I'm going to be going over the Grado SR325 again. As my last review, when I first started, I was having focus issues, and I still do because the D3200 is a bit outdated. So, until I get a new camera that can focus on my face and not, you know, switch back and forth, I know it's pretty annoying, but um, I apologize, and that's why I'm redoing this one. I'm still going to keep the other one up, but I'll just redirect that to this review. So without further ado, let's talk about the SR325. I got some extra time with it, so that's good. I can make some updated impressions and whatnot. This is a open back dynamic, super oral, so it fits on your ear, and has a frequency response of 18 hertz, 24,000 kilohertz. Sensitivity of 99.8 decibels, an impedance of 32 ohms, and it's made out of metal, leather, and foam. It's 12.6 ounces, and I mean, it feels pretty durable actually. Out of all the the lower ended, the lower end models like the 60E, the 80E, the 125, the 225, and the 325, the 325 feels more substantial than the other ones because the ADE and the 60E are made up mostly plastic. I think as well as the the 225E is plastic as well. As far as comfort, we'll talk about comfort first. I'm going to be honest, these are not very comfortable over the long term. I found myself making more than frequent adjustments and I think it is in large part due to the ear cups. The G cushions were on the GS1000E, the GS2000E, the PS1000. The L cushions are on the Grado 325, so this model that I'm reviewing today, as well as the 125. And the S cushions are on the 60E, the 80E, and the 225E. And as far as comfort is concerned, the reason those are more comfortable, the 80 is extremely comfortable. In fact, you could wear that for quite a long period of time without making any adjustments. But the 325E, because it uses the L cushions, they are not comfortable at all. I mean, the fact that your ears are more exposed to the driver is a big reason why. And even after fiddling with them and trying to adjust them, to get a good fit, it's just, it, it wasn't happening. So with this updated review, I'll have to knock down the comfort. I think after spending more time with them, I can say that it, they are just not, I would say average, below average, probably below average. The headphones themselves are pretty light, despite that the fact that they are more substantial than the other models, but, so let's get into build. Build quality is, like I said, these feel a little heavier than the others, so build is a little bit better. But by and large, each successive model is almost the exact same as far as that's as far as that goes. You've got the adjustment here, which is a little bit odd. But the cups, the cups are pretty they feel pretty heavy. And so that's a plus. I wouldn't feel comfortable throwing these around. They would probably survive a couple of drops. You've got, the, the cable's not detachable, and it's pretty thick. Um, it splits off into a Y, and it terminates in a standard 3.5 millimeter jack with a quarter inch adapter. The, the jack is pretty bulky, um, and it will not fit into a phone with a case at least an OtterBox. I have an OtterBox and it won't, I have to actually take the case off to put, to plug the headphones in. So that's a little bit of a, a negative as far as I'm concerned, but overall build, I would say about average, maybe slightly above average. There's no padding on the headband, um, but you're not really gonna need it because the headphones are pretty lightweight. But like I said, because your ear is exposed to the driver, the cups will 
kind of dig into your earlobes. So sound, how do they sound? The overall frequency response is extremely solid and balanced and until you get to that mid-range and to be honest the mid-range is the reason why I cannot outright recommend these that 2k spike at first I thought it was you know it only reared its ugly head every so often but it's it almost seems like with every song you're gonna get that sibilance and they just come across as very papery sounding and a little bit too artificial for my taste especially when the Philips SHP 9500s are <laughs> light years cheaper and they don't have that that spike it's, it's a very similar sound sound signature aside from that 2k peak um, what I will say is the bass on the 325 is almost 325e is almost perfect I mean it's extremely textured and nuanced with quite a bit of detail and although it won't it won't satisfy like hardcore EDM lovers and hip hop heads but for me it still does well with those genres despite the fact that the bass doesn't really slam it just it's more of a it's more of a uh, gradual curve that comes up like this and then you know goes like that and then the the, the spike is just too much and so Things will come across very essy sounding, slightly artificial, um, of course sibilant, and I just I just couldn't get over, I just couldn't get over it, and so for a fraction of the price you can I would either recommend something like the Sennheiser HD five fifty eight, the Philips SHP ninety five hundred, or the Grado SR eighty E, which would be a not a distant third but it would be it would definitely be behind the 9500 and the HD 558 after sitting down with the 9500s again I was just floored the first time I heard them I was like eh. I mean but I don't, I'm not really a believer in burning but burn in time but I, it just seems like the second and third time like each subsequent time listening with the 9500 just gets better and better and for the price, it's it's basically a steal like the V6. So, yeah, I would <clears throat> I would go ahead and pass on the 325e. I may recommend the 60e or the 80e as a as a third place finisher behind the 9500 and the HD 558 as an entry level sort of open backed uh, experience for those who want to get their feet wet and see what it's all about, what the open back sound is all about. They will do well with most genres. I kind of prefer them with rock, guitar-oriented stuff. They'll work with hip-hop, uh, jazz, classical, acoustic, stuff like that, but there are better options. I would never spend, I think these are retail around $300. I would never spend $300 on these, I'm sad to say. Yeah, the last thing I wanted to say is the cushions really make a difference with Grado headphones, and I didn't realize that at first until I went back to audio advice, and I sat down with at least five or six different Grados and just went back and forth until I could hear a discernible difference, and I, I came to the conclusion that the only differences really are the cups. The, the S cushions found on the 80Es and the 60Es will result in a, a little bit smoothed over sound so there's not as much sibilance so that's why they're more tolerable than a 325e with the L cushions which open up the sound but get extremely a lot more harsh just put it bluntly the GS1000e is probably in my opinion the best out of the bunch along with the PS500e and so yeah the cushions make a huge difference other than that if you look at graphs of Grado headphones, I've looked at at least three or four. They don't have, there aren't graphs available for all of them. I was searching around and I just, I just couldn't find graphs for certain ones. But if you look at these graphs, they're almost identical with that 2K spike, the very good bass, and 
a somewhat bright treble. So, yeah, to be honest, the 60E or the 80 is going to get you 95% of the Grado sound. And that's about all I have to say about that. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to speak with you. And don't forget to like, dislike, comment, subscribe to my growing channel. Talk with you all soon. Peace out.